Hello and welcome to another episode. Um, today I'm going to be discussing um, some stamps from the George V era. And these are the stamps known as the Downy Heads. Now the Downy Heads were the first definitive issues for George V. And these were issued in 1911 initially. Um, these were printed by Harrison and Sons. Um, in the previous years, there'd been a, a change of contract. Um, Delarue had lost the the contract to print the British postage stamps. Um, Dela, um, sorry, Harrison and Sons had put in a lower tender and won the contract. Now the problem was they had no experience of printing postage stamps and they needed to get assistance from the Royal Mint to produce some of the dies to produce the the stamps. Now the downy heads are so called. Um, let me just show you the design of the downy head. This is um, the downy head and it's so cold because the three quarter pose of George V is taken from a photograph taken by um, W and D Downey who were the official court photographers at the time. Oh, there's me blowing the stamp away. And... Um, So initially it was planned that there would be two issues released, the green halfpenny and the um the red penny. Now these stamps were issued uh, following the coronation of George V on the 22nd of June 1911 and they were received with much criticism artistically and just for the design the stamps were found to be very blotchy um that again this was down to the lack of experience by the parties involved in producing the stamps now several attempts were made to resurrect the um set of stamps so new dies were were introduced um it even got to the point where you know equipment was um outsourced from america to help try and, and rectify the issues they'd had with um with the printing um it's said that george v himself didn't like these stamps he was a you know he was a philatelist before he'd um come to the throne he you know he was a he was the president or the the chair of the royal philatelic society in london it was him who'd, who'd given the society their royal decree um yeah he was a a massive stamp collector and you know that was one of his uh his major hobbies he devoted time even whilst he was uh, king, you know, he devoted certain days of the week to uh, spend time organising his his stamp collection. Now, in the end, only the first two issues, the halfpenny green and the penny red, were actually issued on sale to the public. Um, the rest of the designs were withdrawn. Um, a full set of values had been planned and there were essays and designs in place for a lot of those. I'm going to show you a couple of those in the corner. I'll just overlay some photographs. But yeah, it was decided then in 1912 that they would replace the downy heads with... 
um, a more traditional stamp design which is let me show you this I'm only going to show you this briefly I'm not going to delve too deeply into this particular set of stamps but yeah these were the side on profile very similar to the stamps of George of uh, Edward the seventh um, and just much more of a classic um, classic design you know Queen uh, Queen Victoria stamps had all been a side on profile as had Edward the seventh and then yeah it was decided that this was the better option now you'll notice on most British stamps that the, the king doesn't wear the crown I mean you can see there it's just above his head um, and I don't know if people have seen the new uh, definitives that have been designed for King Charles III and some of the criticism mounted at those was that he wasn't wearing the crown but it's like you know people have obviously not researched <laughs> going back in time to, to you know to see the previous monarchs because none of the previous male monarchs on postage stamps are wearing the crown on on british stamps and that's true all the way through from edward the seventh through to george the sixth now this set of stamps um there's a varied collection of them as you can see here i've got quite a selection of them here these are all downy heads and they've all got different catalogue numbers. So these were all the, the different issues that were released. Um, some of them are just colour variations. Some of them are watermark varieties. But some of them will also be where the plates were changed. So the actual design on the stamps is slightly different. Now, it's quite a complex area to collect. And some of these stamps, I know I will never actually own even though i've got the placeholders in you know in the stock book here for them due to the cost you know some of the more rare uh, varieties are probably a little bit outside my budget but yeah they run from catalog numbers um sg321 all the way through to sg350 and there are a couple of additional ones on there as well. You know, there's things like varieties like there. We've got SG330A. Now, I quite like these just for the for the sheer quirkiness of them. You know, the fact that they weren't well received. Um, and they're a bit of an oddity. But um, let me just get one of each of these. Um, let me make sure I know where I'm going. So that was 342. And that's 339. So yeah, as you can see here, the, the two designs. In fact, let me put them the other way around. Put the halfpenny on the left. As you can see here, the two designs, they're not exactly the same. They've got different uh, borders. Now, the one on the left is known as the dolphin border. Now, if you can see the design here at the bottom. And the one on the right is known as the lion border. You know, I don't think they're a particularly awful stamp. Um, but yeah, I can understand why it's not seen as the most flattering image of of the king. And I think that the side-on profile does look far more dignified. But um, yeah, there are so many varieties of these. Like I said, there's, there's almost 50, well, there's 50 plus catalogue numbers for a set of stamps that only contains two denominations. So let me put those back before I forget where I've got them from. So 
how easy is it to pick these up? Well, I've sourced these from um, a variety of places. Um, eBay. Um, you know, some of some of the catalogue numbers are, are very low catalogue value, so you can pick those up easily enough. Um, some of the others I picked up from Hip Stamp. Um, I got a nice selection, uh, probably I think about seven or eight different stamps. And I don't think I paid more than a pound, or certainly not more than two pounds per stamp. Um, you know, dealers do carry the downy heads, and, you know, that's probably a good place to start and see exactly what kind of costs you're incurring. Now, some of them are quite obviously different. You know, the some of the shades are... Let me look at this one here. This is a 324. And then 327. Let's see if I can get a different one. Yeah, you can see it on these two here. You know, there is a distinct shade difference there. The one on the left is a blue-green. Whereas the one on the right is actually a green stamp. So, yeah. Yeah, the criticisms around these stamps, were, like I said, were mainly down to the things like the shading on the head of the king. And just the general design concepts, I think. You know, we did see another three-quarter poles used on stamps in Great Britain in the future, which was the Wilding series for uh, Queen Elizabeth, which was the first set of definitives. But, yeah, generally, everything else that Britain's produced for, for the definitives is always a, a side-on profile. So, yeah, I hope you found this interesting. It's only a short video today. Um, I know I've not kept up my um, proposed schedule of, uh, of content this last couple of weeks, but I have been extremely busy um, this past week. And still currently, I'm, I'm actually on 24th, seven um seven day um call from work so i am on a rotor so i could be woken up at any time up until i finish my rotor on friday and so i've just not had either the uh, concentration or the you know i'm trying to do some other things that needed doing as well you know life kind of gets in the way sometimes um, I did get to spend a bit of time over the weekend um, sorting some more of my albums out, so hopefully that will pay off and I can I can produce some more content based on, on that a little bit later. But yeah, I will um, just show you briefly a little bit more of this. So this is my George V Specialist collection, and again, even when we get to the... To the profile heads here of uh, George V. Again, there are very many um, varieties. Again, different colour shades, different printers, different uh, watermarks, slight variations in colour, like I say. Um, One thing you really do need to navigate your way around these is probably the best resource I have for this is Stanley Gibbons Commonwealth and British Empire, which has the very um, nice um, section on the British stamps at the front. 
before it moves on to the Empire and Commonwealth countries. And this is fairly important in being able to identify these stamps. This gives you all the different catalogue numbers. It gives you the, the type, shows you the different dies, um, shows you the different watermarks. And then shows you again here differences between certain dies and again here differences. So yeah, it's quite, you know, this is a completely different set of uh, catalogue numbers than what you'd get in just the Collect British Stamps um, catalogue. And the same goes for Edward the Seventh. Now, I do have a very simplified um, Edward the Seventh collection, which is based on the Collect British Stamps uh, simplified um, catalogue list. But a set of stamps here that is, what, 15 stamps? There are actually 2, 15, 3, 115 varieties <laughs> of those 15 stamps. So, again, you know, these are the same. There are just so many different different varieties of each of these. You know, some of them have got three or four or five different uh, varieties per denomination. Um, another quite handy uh, catalogue to have um, is this one here this isn't the the four kings special specialized catalog and this covers the period between um victoria and queen elizabeth it's volume two of the stanley gibbons uh, specialized stamp catalogs and it covers edward the seventh george the fifth as you can see here represented by the seahorse stamp here on the cover the limited edition of Edward the Eighth and the stamps of George the Sixth. Now this is an old um ex library book as you can see here. Now I think these volumes are around about forty, forty five pounds on Stanley Gibbons at the moment. But um I picked this up for two or three pounds on eBay. Obviously ex um library book. Now it is an old it is an older version, I'm not sure what year this is from. I think it's um, like kind of mid 80s. In fact, let me see if I can see a date in it. 89. So yeah, it is a rather older copy. And one downside of this is the all the imagery in here is in black and white. But when it comes to information about each of the individual stamps this really is second to none it gives you so much information and more so than you would ever ever need you know it depends how deep you want to dive into the hobby i mean the things in here that i, I, I read these and you know there are so many different variations things to do with the die differences and even things that I'm never going to delve down into researching in any great detail like that but as you can see here there's a whole section on the downy heads and you know the essays here for different designs um, and it does give you a, a good history of different things you know there's a section here on the Edward the Seventh Colour Trials. You know, I think, you know, if this is, covers an era that you're interested in, I think it's definitely worth picking one of these up for a couple of quid on eBay. You know, you just so much information in here. The Queen Victoria one is actually very good as well. It goes through all the different plate, different plate numbers, for penny blacks, plenty uh, tuppenny blues, penny reds, really in depth. 
um, just gives you a lot of information, you know, gives you everything you really need to know. Then we move on to the profile head, it tells you how the profile head was selected for the replacements for the downy heads. You know, they used uh, two two um, different uh, profiles. They used the coinage head and they also used the metal head. Um, engraved by uh, Bertram McKennell. So, uh, yeah, as you can see there, we've got the coinage head and then the metal head so yeah just a very uh, very interesting little uh, volume and you can glean as much or as little from that as you need to but yeah it does go into covers everything from booklets to what's their printing differences errors so yeah really handy um, like I say, I picked this up, I picked up the Queen Victoria one for a very similar price, maybe two or three pounds. So, yeah, really good to have if those are things that uh, you're interested in. So, I'm going to leave it there for today. Um, I'll have another video out later this week for sure. Not sure what the topic is going to be, but um, hopefully it's something that will uh, be of interest to, to some of you. Um, so, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed, please give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. Uh, it does help promote the videos and get me some more views out there. Um, if you haven't already, could you please consider subscribing? Um, my subscriber count is up to 660 something I think at the moment so creeping up towards the 750 milestone which will be another giveaway so hopefully that won't take too long to get to maybe maybe April May sort of time We'll see how things go over the next few weeks. But yeah, thanks for watching. Um, as always, stay safe, keep warm, enjoy your stamps, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.